Okay, welcome back to The Hill. When you need a billion dollars, which is basically the buy-in for a presidential can campaign in American history year 2024, who better to go to for cash than actual billionaires? After President Biden raised a reported $26 million last night in New York with the help of Presidents Clinton and Obama, now President Trump says he has plans to do him several million dollars better, announcing a fundraiser next week down in Palm Beach with his sights on a very big number. $33 million in one night. And consider this headline from the Washington Post. Quote, many GOP billionaires balked at January 6th. They're coming back to Trump. The article goes on to say, quote, the shift reflects many conservative billionaires' fears of President Biden's tax agenda, which, if approved, would drastically reduce their fortunes. Ah, ha democracy began. Ha panel, they say <laughs> the best things in life are free. It's just that presidential campaigns aren't really among them. These very wealthy folks appear to be voting with their wallets to protect them against higher taxes under Biden. Is this a wise investment on the part of these very wealthy people? And I'm going to go first down to our friend Mick Mulvaney. Mick, what do you think? Uh, first of all, who's got this kind of cash? Some of these tickets are $800,000 to sit at the table with President Trump next week. Mick's got it. <laughs> yeah, you sort of got to ask the same question as to who raised all the money last night. Look, there's wealthy sure. people on both sides of the aisle who spend money on getting their politician elected. There's no question about it. What I think you're seeing, though, and the important part is the dynamic, which is there are a lot of folks who are not giving big checks to Donald Trump until he became the presumptive nominee. We talked, I think, uh -huh. a night or two ago on the show about the huge numbers that Biden had put up in the last quarter vis-a-vis -vis what Trump had put up. I think he almost doubled his output. That, those numbers didn't represent the folks that were coming back to Trump since Nikki Haley got out of the race. I keep coming back to the, the night of the South Carolina uh, primary, the night when Trump essentially sewed everything up, um, and Woody Johnson was on the stage. Woody Johnson isn't from South Carolina, uh, but he does own the New York Jets. He does have a lot of money, and he was an ambassador right. under the Trump administration. That was my first indication the big money was coming back to Trump, and it wouldn't surprise me to see Trump exceed the $26 million that uh, Biden raised last night. All right, we, we talked about criticism from some of these people that are attending uh, this thing, supposedly next Saturday night down in Palm Beach. Uh, one of them being Robert Bigelow, who said in the wake of January 6th, uh, he certainly lost me as a supporter and as someone who would champion, and champion him. Uh, he showed that in that particular hour that he was no commander, uh, but Mr. Bigelow is apparently going to be front and center down there since uh, fortunes have changed and the political winds have shifted. What do you make of all? I mean, is this business as usual? Sound yes, it feels it kind of swampy. Or I mean, let's be honest, both parties are going to have mo an obscene amount of money in this election. No right. matter what the quarterly fundraising totals say, both the Democrats and the Republicans are going to be incredibly well financed by their respective billionaire class, and 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 that's just the reality of really the the, the post Citizens United landscape of, of politics and campaigns and, and fundraising. And I think if you look at the numbers, there's a lot of people out there who were completely against Donald Trump, but they're not going to vote for Joe Biden just yeah. because of. I mean, there are a lot of people. I mean, there's a difference between not voting for Joe Biden and giving someone eight hundred thousand dollars. There right? is, yeah. except that a lot of people say that I will take the policies over the person, and uh -huh. then there's a lot of people that say you shouldn't. Right. Okay. And so I think you're going to see a lot of people are coming out that said they would never support Donald Trump, and here they are supporting Donald Listen, Trump. Listen, if you're this rich, you're yeah. ruthless. You have no conscience to do whatever it takes to Real keep quickly, your money. Real quickly, please. Two things. Number one, like. To an average voter, the decision between lower taxes and having a democracy is an easy decision. We would choose having a democracy. The problem is these folks are unaffected because they're wealthy and powerful and can do whatever they want. Secondly, the real focus should not be on how they're raising, it's how they're going to spend. Donald Trump is spending his money to defend his legal cases. Democrats really are putting clear. those in field and GOTV and right. voter recognition. I really want to be clear about something. Republicans are as concerned about democracy as, as Democrats are. They just view it very, very differently. And I think that as much as you're saying that people are, you know, that that's what they're putting at stake. A lot of Republicans are saying right. democracy is at stake, too. This, this is, sounds like Thank you for watching. And make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.